Hi, welcome to Tiny Garage Fabrication. This week, we're either gonna make it or break it. First things first, thanks for stopping by. If you like what you're about to see on my channel, please subscribe, like, and comment. On its way, so today, I'm going to <clears throat> fabricate some supports to go from the brake and clutch pedal, kind of triangulate them up to the back of the uh, dash where it's secure, and the mounting point for that is also going to double as a better mounting point for the steering column bracket. Alright, here we go. I'm going to show you some, uh, some template making. Um, this is how I do stuff uh, if I don't do it on the CNC. Um, I have access to that kind of stuff, so a lot of things I'll take measurements. Um, usually I'll just start with the template even if I CNC it though. That way I can kind of like, you know, mock the stuff up, see if it actually fits, make it cardboard before you make it in steel. Um, I use cereal boxes uh, because it's good material, it's cheap, my kids eat so much cereal that I never run out of this. So it keeps me from having to buy extra, you know, template material holes. So I'm using a Willwood single swing clutch and a Willwood dual master cylinder. So this will be the brake, this will be the clutch. Unfortunately, this circle right here is not the same as the mounting points on the top and this one I'm going to make a plate it's going to go from here uh, and then the other ones then I'll have some rods that go up it's going to be one inch square stock that's going to go tie into the bottom of the dash itself there's a support bar under there so that'll triangulate everything so you know if I have to panic stop it's not going to push through the firewall it's not going to do anything stupid like that so I have to make a plate to go from here so they're sitting in the car like this. The plate's going to tie in the top of this to the top of this, and then bars that come towards you know where I'm standing right now uh, for the firewall. Another from the center of this to the center of this is three and three quarter inches. So that's where I'm going to start. Oh, also um, I'm using this particular piece because it's got a, it bends up right here. Because how this is going to work is I'm going to actually make a tab. So there's going to be tabs right here, triangulated, and that's what the support bar is going to hook to. I'm not going to cut some weird angle and have it go to this plate itself. It's going to have a little tab. You'll see that. Um, and I'll show you how to make this cut it so that you can bend it by hand pretty much. Basically, you'll cut kerf into it. You'll be able to bend it. It'll be one piece instead of cutting four different pieces. It'll be one piece. Be able to bend it up. Get all your angles the way you want them and um, set this thing in place. Centering that up, a little bit off, we'll go right there. I'll measure my three and three quarter inches. So, one, two, three and three quarters. Now, I know that that's where the hole for this needs to be. So I can center this hole up with that mark. It would behoove me to do the same with the rear. Let me make sure these bolts are, these holes are the same pattern, they are. So the reason I'm doing it on the rear as well is so that <clears throat> it ends up square. There we go. Drew a little P. Now my bolt should go right there. Center it up right there. Cool. basics I've got my holes I've got a general shape and then I can get to figure out where I want these to be once it's bent up all right here we go I got my template I cut it out I added um, the supports so like I said it's all gonna be one piece instead of you know what could end up actually being six pieces seven pieces so that's what I did um, mark these I'm gonna drill them so I can actually bolt them into here they're gonna go like that these little gussets, like I said, I'm going to use one by one square tubing. So I actually made these inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. Give me a little bit of room around the outside to weld around. And then these will be attached. So basically you can fold them 
they come up like that. They gusset themselves. There you go. Rods will sit on those and go up now. These actually, so right now they kind of sit at 90 degrees. Um, I'm going to put it in the car, figure out what angle it actually needs to go because they're going to have to lay back a little bit. These gusts will be a little bit more of a slant to lay these back, but that's all going to be cut into the steel. That way when you fold it, you just have to fold it one time and um, you have a one piece plate and then that will tie these in to the dash nicely. Um, I also have to make the piece for the dash. That's I've got, I've got the pedals uh, just kind of marked up on the firewall, just loosely bolted in. I got the plate in there the tabs as you can see and here is the dash so those support rods you can kind of see the um, little brackets here I'm gonna set them up I have to figure out the angle to go from here to here you can see there's not too much of an angle it's really not gonna be that bad but they're gonna sit up above here and go in so it's gonna be something like that so as you kind of saw before I took the ruler stuck it up in there um, this was able to balance somewhat okay. Anyway, I put that in there and then I set this across there and kind of matched the angles to what I could. It came up with 145 degrees roughly. Now that's out of 180 so the angle that needs to be cut back on that is 35 degrees. I took the protractor, put it at 35 degrees, gives me a nice little angle on the inside and then all that I did is I lined it up with the flat, started at the corner. Marked my line right there, did it right there, flipped it upside down, did the same thing for this one, and this one. Alright, so here we are, I cut those angles, I folded the things, I put them back, so they're gusseted, they're tall, they're what they need to be. Here's the dash bar that we're going to support to, kind of square this up, and that's how the bars are going to run. Now I just have to design the top piece where all that's going to go, so that way I can mount the steering wheel, and to support the brake pedals. And even if I was going to make this in, you know, in say SolidWorks, Mastercam, Fusion 360, um, <clears throat> any of those programs, it really helps to make a paper template first so you can have all your dimensions and you can see that it fits. Like if you're making parts that fit together, you can do that in SolidWorks. You can, you know, digitally make sure that they fit together. But you may not know the exact measurement of this angle just in your computer. So it helps to have a mock-up even if you're doing it digitally. That way you know, hey, 35 degrees, that's what I need to set those back to. It takes a little bit of time. I mean, I've been doing this for maybe 20 minutes, but it's totally worth it. Man. Now that I got all those holes drilled, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. Now I drew these lines right here, and we can see those, those are a quarter inch up from the bottom. Because what I'm going to do is after I get these done, I'm going to slice all the way down to that line, leaving just a quarter inch of it attached. And that will allow me to bend it up easier. Instead of having to bend an inch and a quarter worth of eighth inch plate, I'll just have to bend a quarter inch worth of eighth inch plate. So that's the curve. Usually if I'm doing CNC, I will leave the ends connected and then just slice the kerf out of the middle makes it easier to bend and then it's still attached but this is the way i do it at home makes it a little bit easier because i obviously can't just start in the middle so i just go like that bend it up and then you weld it all together in the end anyway cut uh, from the back you can see the kerf lines in there I'm gonna bend these in the vise pretty simple just basically using the vise as a break so line it up the line I want to bend on now I know these tabs need to go back so that this thing can bend on top of here and uh, let's go in get 
give it a bend. Very simple. Um, that's why I cut that kerf. Uh, there we go. And then you can see when I go to weld it in, it's just um, you know a little bit that I have to do. It'll weld up nicely. It was cut nicely. It fits nicely. And uh, let's do the rest. Alright, so here's a couple things. I was able to bend these to 90. Couldn't bend these all the way up. And I can bend a little bit more. Now it's not going to bend all the way, and I'll show you what happens. Same as this one. The other tab is hitting the back. So it's not quite at 90. I'll show you two different ways you can get around that. Here's a piece of 316 steel. This was uh, going to be an airbag mount for another project I was doing. So what you can do is you can set this in there and you can set it so it'll capture the piece you're trying to bend and then it'll use the back of that basically as the anvil, as the back side. Alright cool, so now that's spaced it up about another quarter inch so I can carry through and well it didn't get all of it. It's pretty close. I can do the rest with uh, some some actually with what I'm about to show you next. This right here is my least favorite shop tool. Um, I despise adjustable wrenches because they just suck. You put it on a nut, you turn it, you go to put it back on, it's either way loose or way tight. They just self readjust and the constant adjusting of that pisses me off. But the best thing this is used for is for bending sheet metal uh, or any type of metal. I mean, this is technically plate because it's an eighth, eighth inch. But you can take it, you can put it right on where it needs to be bent, and then you uh, tighten it up. Now you've got some good leverage. You can just bend that piece right to where you need it to be. Got this last one to bend. Got my bendy tool. Just go ahead and put it in and bend away. There it is. So here's the part. I went ahead and um, hit it with the flat disc on the grinder, cleaned it all up, rounded over all the edges. Also, before I did everything, I set it up on the bench and I got my angle finder and I made sure that these angles were where they need to be. The next step I'm going to make the piece that goes on the dash and uh, I'm not going to show any of that because it's exactly the same as this. Get the rods measured that will go between here and that piece. Get those welded on then it will be one big funky piece that will have to slide in, set in, bolt and call it a day. Alright, All right. well here it is. Um, here's the plate you saw me make earlier. There's the uh, plate that will go under the attached to the bottom of the dash. And it's still really hot. You can see it's all um, TIG welded all the way around. Yeah, but that's the thing. And here's the piece all installed. <clears throat> Probably sounds funny in here, echoey. Anyway, there's the pedals coming up. The base plate that I made, there's a little piece that goes in the dash. I had to slot this hole. I wasn't really happy with how it was. Um, it just seemed like the steering wheel was going to be kind of not in the right spot. Anyway, it's sturdy, it's strong, it looks pretty good. Should keep the pedals in place in the event of a panic stop or something like that. Whole bunch more to do, and we'll probably get to that next video. Alright, well, that's about it for the day. It was a long day, but I only got one thing made. Some days are just better than others. Um, some fabrication takes a lot of time, some doesn't. I suppose if I did that on CNC, um, you know, had I designed it, cut it out on a water jet or a CNC plasma cutter, probably could have bent it up. Would have taken a whole lot less time. Um, the thing is, it was something like this when I need those exact measurements. Sometimes it's better to just do paper templates and cut it out. Um, I wouldn't have been able to use any CNC stuff till you know, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Today is a Sunday, so I just kind of wanted to get the project moving along. So I went ahead and uh, did it manually, did it the slow way, the old-fashioned way. Um, but the cool thing is I was able to do it, show you some techniques, um, just so that you can get to know 
that this stuff can be done without all of the super fancy machines. I mean, I did this with a die grinder, with a bandsaw. Not everybody has access to a bandsaw, but the whole thing could have been done with a cutting wheel on a uh, grinder or a uh, cutting disc on a Dremel for some of the smaller intricate stuff. Um, I used a TIG welder. A MIG welder would have worked just fine. I had a bench vise, a hammer, and some measuring tools. Really not a lot that went into it. Um, <clears throat> so, hopefully, you know, you kind of saw a glimpse of the things that you can do. You know, just get out there, try to fab stuff yourself. You can follow along with me. I've got a lot more stuff to do, um, a lot more cool ideas, a lot more out of the box thinking, and um, I'll be able to show you some of that stuff along the way. So, once again, you know, comment if you like what you saw. Even if you didn't like what you saw, you know, you can give me some tips. Please do. Um, this interactive channel, interactive uh, platform. So, with that said, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let's keep on building stuff. We'll see you next week. Thanks.